Okay, now I own both the Canon R5C and the Canon R5. I've had them both for a couple years, I absolutely love them, but I gotta admit, there is one that I always end up grabbing a little bit more than the other. So let's get to take a look at what these two cameras bring and why I still end up to this day grabbing one instinctively over the other. Oh hey, and do me a favor, if you find this video useful or interesting, go ahead and just hit that subscribe button. <laughs> it's really hard keeping a YouTube channel going these days and your subscriptions make all the difference in the world and allowing me to keep you bringing content like this. Now the Canon R5C and the R5 are both powerhouses of small little hybrid cameras. And even though they look very, very similar on the surface, they actually occupy and serve two really different niches in my work. I wanna talk about that today. Now I am fortunate to own both of these cameras and I have used them extensively over the last few years. And I think that kind of provides me a unique perspective on the strengths and weaknesses of each one. And if you're in a situation where you're maybe thinking about getting a camera like this, but you're not sure which one fits best for you, yeah, maybe I can offer you something that can help you make a decision out there. Now, I do wanna start off by saying that I actually love both of these cameras. I mean, they're not perfect cameras, but they're really, really good for what they are. Now that being said though, I have definitely found myself reaching more for one of these cameras much, much more consistently than the other. And there are a couple very, very specific reasons for that. So now the question then is after years of almost daily use, which one of these cameras do I find myself instinctively reaching for more than the other? And which one, if I had to choose one, would I pick if I had to? And the winner for me, even after a full four years after its release, is going to be the good old fashioned, trusty Canon R5. Surprise? Well, there's some reasons for that. Let's go and take a look at it. Now, before I get into why I find myself instinctively reaching for this i5 more than the R5C, I do need to put a note out here about the R5C and its quality. And really the R5C is an incredible camera that provides me with terrific results. I've never been unhappy with anything I've gotten from the R5C. I also feel that if you look at these two cameras head to head, just the files, there's really no doubt that the R5C does capture a slightly better image than the R5. I know they're the same sensor, but there are differences you can see there. And so if I ever find myself shooting something that says like a potential for theatrical or maybe a Netflix type streamer release, the R5C is going to be my go-to camera of choice. However, that being said, Realistically, I find that 90% of the time that I use mirrorless cameras like this, it's going to create content that is going to be released on either standard broadcast TV or the internet. And in those situations, I really believe, even though the R5 does have an edge in image quality, the R5 is still fantastic too. And really, if you're not looking at these head-to-head, -head, pixel, 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 this looks great on both broadcast TV and on the internet, and it gives me all the image quality that I would want that holds up and looks professional and looks great. So even though the R5 does kind of lag behind the R5C a little bit in image quality, for 90% of the work I do, honestly, it's perfect and does exactly what I need it to be. So as I'm talking about this, just keep in mind that there are gonna be certain scenarios where I feel the R5C is the more appropriate go-to camera, but this video is really about why I pick up one of these cameras over the other and where its practicalities are. Now, there are a number of reasons why I instinctively reach for the R5 over the R5C on any given day. And the first reason you have to bring up is quite simply the battery life between these two cameras. <laughs> now, it's no secret that the R5C makes terrible use of its native LPE6 battery that is in here. And while there are a lot of easy workarounds that completely fix this, and you can put V-mounts on there that will make sure you never have a power problem ever on this camera. And in addition, there have also been some firmware updates to help the R5C with its terrible battery life. But it is still, even now with the firmware updates and all that stuff, it's just much less practical than what you get in video mode on the R5. I can go a lot longer on R5 and I'm not sweating having to hook stuff up here for the battery. And you know, what I love about this Canon R5 is I can just literally grab it out of my bag and almost instantly be getting B-roll or other footage just with the battery in here and a lens on the front. And the reality is not every production is going to give you or afford you the luxury of time to set up a more elaborate 
rig. And this ability to get the R5 set up and running so fast is really what makes this camera what I'll grab in so many of the situations that I'm in, even for smaller commercial work. Now, the second area that I usually will tend to lean toward an R5 over the R5C, especially when I'm doing commercial or content-based work is actually going to be the autofocus between these two camera. Now, the Canon R5C uses the Canon Cinema autofocus system, and the R5 uses the standard video autofocus system that Canon has. And they are very different when you actually put them head to head. Now, that being said, I personally found that if I'm shooting a simple scene, like say an interview or talking head, something like that, both of these systems work fantastic. You're not gonna have any problem whatsoever. But if I find myself doing something dynamic, like on a gimbal or a handheld, I just find honestly that the Canon R5 video autofocus system tends to be more reliable and consistent than the Canon R5C. And this is for someone that's done a lot of autofocus shooting on both of these cameras. And this really makes a giant difference when you're getting gimbal B-roll on set. And it's one of those things, when you're working on a set, you got a lot of factors. And honestly, clients can get very frustrated nowadays if you keep resetting shots because the AF is getting lost or confused. Now, I don't really have a scientific way of doing this, but in my unscientific real world experiences, I tend to find that the autofocus on the Canon R5 I'd say it's about 20, 25% more consistent than the R5C. And this makes a dramatic difference in being able to get your shot quickly and move on to the next one during the production day. That's not saying that the Canon R5C has bad autofocus. The autofocus on here is pretty darn good, but it still is not quite as consistent and reliable as the R5. And that makes a big difference when you're talking about getting quick shots on a day when you're on a budget and have very, very little time. And while there are some things about the Canon R5C autofocus system that I really like over the R5, like for instance, I wish the Canon R5 had the face only autofocus, but Overall, the R5 autofocus, it just gives me a better chance to get the shot quicker and to go out there. Now there is another area that completely drives me crazy about the Canon R5C, and which is why I often find myself going here for the Canon R5, and that is the R5C's lack of Bluetooth and wireless capability in video mode without a thousand dollar add-on. It's absolutely something that drives me crazy about a camera. I've done some videos on that. You can click the link up here if you're interested in it. But you cannot control the Canon R5C wirelessly unless you have a thousand dollar add-on. Now that means you can't set up camera control from your gimbal and other things and you can easily do it here on the Canon R5. I don't understand why Canon just doesn't give us that control on the R5C, seeing that it's in photo mode and not in video mode. But that being said, if you wanna wirelessly control or use Bluetooth control for your camera, you do not have that option on the Canon R5C, and boom, it's built in right here, ready to go on the Canon R5, super easy and very, very intuitive to work. Now that brings me here to a talk about some gimbal work and how these cameras work with gimbals. And let's be honest, both of these cameras are pretty much designed to maximize all the things that a gimbal can give you. They're light, they are very, very beautiful image quality, they have good autofocus, they're pretty much designed to give you beautiful gimbal work. And because of so much of my smaller commercial shoots require me to move fast and implement a lot of the gimbal shots on it, the R5, if you put these things head to head as far as a gimbal option, the R5 in my opinion just absolutely dominates the R5C if you're gonna be doing a lot of gimbal work. And there's a couple of things that kind of combine to lead to this dominance for gimbal work between the cameras. The first one is, as I mentioned, battery life. When you put this on your gimbal, you're not gonna to have to be sweating your battery running out so fast like you do on the Canon R5C. I've just found that for gimbal work, unless I have a V-mount attached to the gimbal underneath it or something like that, this isn't really something I would ever wanna use in a normal gimbal situation because between setups and all this stuff, it seems like you're always having to change batteries and put the camera down and do it. It's just not good for that. So the battery life on this camera, I can put it on the R5 and know I can go for a while and get practical use from the battery life on a gimbal. In addition to that battery life, the fact that I have no Bluetooth wireless control on the R5C versus on the R5 means that I can't control my camera from the gimbal. And man, I hit the record button on the back of my RS3 all the time. I love having that. I can just hit the record button and this thing starts recording. Whereas on the Canon R5C, I still find myself, if I have it on the gimbal, having to come up and manually hit the record button because I don't have wireless control. 
So when you kind of factor all those things in there, the Canon R5, if you find yourself doing a lot of gimbal work and that's your primary thing, I would have to say the R5 is superior in almost every way here to the Canon R5C. The other thing I would say about gimbal work is while the image quality is superior in the R5C to the R5, when you add motion blur like you would normally get on any gimbal because you're moving, that's where some of this image quality sort of negates itself because you just have natural blur in the image. So while this camera may be slightly sharper at say 4K 60, when you're moving and rolling the camera on a gimbal, you lose a lot of that advantage and they really kind of come out pretty even. So it's one of those things if you're a gimbal worker, Man, I really do think the R5 tends to be more practical for gimbal work than the R5C. Now, in addition to my gimbal work, there's also another area that I think the R5, depending on some of my smaller commercial or content creation projects, really makes it a more practical choice to pick up than the R5C. And that is going to be on file flexibility. Now, the R5C has some great video codecs in there. I mean, the XFAVC is fantastic, but I often find myself using these kind of smaller mirrorless cameras for a lot of YouTube and social media jobs. I don't need something that's gonna have a ton of information. What I wanna do is I want to save file space and still get a good looking image that I can do color correction and make it look good in post. And the fact of the matter is the R5 has this really, really powerful IPB light codec, which is incredibly compact, but still looks great. And as long as you don't have to push your grade too much, this makes it an ideal video file format for YouTube and social media videos. I can literally come out and shoot the exact same thing between these cameras and take up about a third of the card space on my R5. And if you're someone that's posting stuff daily or weekly, and you're talking about terabytes of information, this IPB light codec is an absolute game changer compared to what you can get on the R5C. In the R5T, you can shoot more compressed, but you start losing 10 bit. The IPB light gets me 10 bit, but it's much, much more compressed. And I think if you're just shooting lots of content, that makes a big difference in hard drive space and just working and filling up cards on a set. So it, it's a small thing, but it is something that tends to play into the factor. And the last area where I do tend to grab my R5 over the R5C is going to be in photography work. I just don't do video. And, you know, when it comes down to it, these two cameras are essentially identical when it comes to photography. Same operating system, they operate identical. But the only difference is the IBIS in the R5. And I do like having IBIS for photography because it's just one more little tool to help with a lot of the handheld work I do. That being said, I still use the R5C for photos all the time. It's great, I really don't really see any difference. But the one kind of small thing is because I have had to modify my R5C with a V-mount holder on here just to, for the battery concerns for video work, it just, out of the box, this one's just more ready to go for me to set up for photo work, whereas the R5C tends to need more set up for video work. So if I'm just doing photo work, the R5 does tend to come out versus the R5C. So as you can see, it's an interesting discussion, but I will say this, you know, even though I do tend to find myself grabbing the R5 more consistently than the R5C, there are a lot of areas where the R5C still wins out over the R5. And I want that to be said, because if you're thinking about getting these two cameras, you need to be aware of what you want to shoot and where you're going to do it. For instance, if I'm on a bigger job and I need to match up with say C300s and C500s, I'm going to grab this camera. It matches up very, very well with C70, C300s, C500s. It's just, the quality of this matches really well with the cinema system. The fact that it has a cinema operating system in it is absolutely fantastic. I really love that cinema operating system just because it allows me to dive in so much more deeper and control what this camera can do. And really, let's be honest, this R5C does not have the dreaded 30 minute record limit that is on the R5. So if you're doing yourself doing a lot of interview stuff and don't wanna be limited, and you, you know, mostly you're not doing a lot of gimbal stuff and you want a camera that can record and give you great video and never have to worry about 30 minute limits, well, the R5C is going to be the better option for you. So as you can see, as someone that uses these cameras more, I just wanted to kind of share this with you because I think it's sometimes hard if you don't have these cameras to figure out which one is right for you. So hopefully this is one of those things that can help you make that decision a little bit easier. They're both great cameras. I guess we'll just have to figure out which one you'll find yourself reaching for more. Anyway, guys, I'd love to hear what you have to say about this. Leave me any notes and comments down below. And yeah, I'd rather keep on shooting. And uh, yeah, I'll talk to you soon.